Steve just come in in Chase's class there. Chase and his family are off visiting the ark, so he's he's out tonight. Those serving tonight, uh, opening prayer will be Bill Ballard, or closing prayer is Bill Ballard. Greg Hogue will be our song leader, and Randy Nelms will be doing our devotional. So if you would, let's bow and have a prayer at this time. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you and give you thanks for the many blessings you provide each and every day. We thank you for the opportunity to come in the middle of the week to be able to study from your word. And we pray for your blessings on, on those here at Grace Point, on the efforts that are being done here. Father, we ask your blessings on those that are on our prayer list. We especially pray for the Brown family and, and Jim. Pray that those tending to him will keep him comfortable. Father, we pray for Lenny and, and her procedure that will take place Monday, and we ask your blessings on her. We pray that you'll watch over the doctors that tend to her. Father, help us to always look to you for guidance, to look to your word so we know what we are to do and how we, we are to be. Father, we are thankful for your son. It's through his name we pray. Amen. I was talking with Chase uh, Sunday, and uh, he was holding Ellie, and I, I told her, I said, when he said they were going to see the ark, I said, well, you be sure and tell Noah, I said, hello, and she said, he won't be there. <laughs> so uh, um, I, I hope he's not, because I don't want her to come back and tell me he was there. But anyway, uh, let's uh, start with number 851. We'll sing uh, all three verses of 851. Let's all sing out. There's not many of us, so let's sing out. <clears throat> Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. Shadows of this life have grown, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison bars is flown, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah. By and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days, and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Sixty-four. We'll sing the first and last stanza there. <clears throat> Just a few more days to be filled with praise and to tell the old, old story. Then when twilight falls and my Savior calls, I shall go to Him in glory. I'll exchange my cross for a starry crown Where the gates swing outward never At his feet I'll lay every burden down And with Jesus reign forever 
What a joy it will be when I wake to see him for whom my heart is burning. Nevermore to sigh, nevermore to die, for the day my heart is yearning. I'll exchange my cross for a starry crown where the gates swing outward never. At his feet I'll lay every burden down and with Jesus reign forever. Number 852 will be our invitation song. Before I get into my lesson this evening, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you that have sent up prayers on my behalf for my kidney situation, and also very grateful for the cards and the texts and the phone calls that I received, and I just ask you that sometime in late May to put me back in your prayers again when I have an MRI to make sure that all this stuff has worked so far that they've done. Tonight I want to talk about something that I know a lot of men that give a Wednesday night lesson <clears throat> use this opportunity for kind of preach to themselves, I guess, and this is, uh, this is one of my pitfalls, and I'm getting better at it as I get older, but how to overcome worry, and uh, I'm taking this from Philippians 4, 6, and 7. In September 1988, there was a one-hit wonder song that titled, Don't Worry, Be Happy. You still hear that song occasionally today. It is an acapella song that was a top 100 billboard hit sung by Bobby McFerrin. Now, I know some of you are too young to even remember that happy-go-lucky song, but I think most of us in here this evening probably does. And it kind of gives you a good feeling whenever you hear it. It kind of uh, takes you back and makes you relax a little bit. But though the, this song addresses some of the material things that we stress about today, there are a couple of lines of lyrics we can associate to our spiritual needs. <clears throat> I want us to look at what worry is and how it can affect our lives, especially our spiritual lives. So what is worry? In order to manage our worries, we must understand what worry is. The definition of worry is to feel uneasy or concerned about something, to cause to feel anxious, distressed, or troubled. As human beings, we probably all have experienced a state of being worried at some point of time in our life. The extent of how and when we worry is when worrying becomes a slippery slope, especially if we're trying to live as faithful Christians. I believe as a Christian, it's okay to be concerned about something, but to worry, especially in excess, is sinful. As I get older and sometimes uh, or something has bothered me, I find myself saying that I am concerned about something instead of I am worried about something. That, that alone helps my peace of mind just to substitute those words. Concern just doesn't seem quite as serious to me as worry, but at the same time, it's something that's on your mind. One of the definitions I just mentioned is to cause to feel anxious. Philippians 4, 6, Paul tells us, be anxious for nothing. Luke 12, 29, Jesus says, And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor be worried. Number one, to worry or having anxiety can damage your health. Medical experts tell us that prolonged worrying can lead to severe physical problems. Some examples are ulcers, headaches, change of blood pressure, heart attacks, and depression. Worrying can become crippling if it's not properly controlled. Number two, to worry affects the way we treat others. When we worry a lot, we tend to be harsher to our family, our friends, and our co-workers. We have a tendency to lash out at those we love. Christians have all the reasons to be happy, and when we worry all the time, we don't express that happiness that we enjoy knowing that Christ is with us. A line of lyrics from the song that I just mentioned says, because when you worry, your face will frown, and that will bring everybody down. 
Number three, to worry can disrupt our spiritual productivity. When worry consumes our thoughts, we tend to leave the Lord and his will out of our lives. We find a little time for prayer, Bible study, and our interest in worship service is reduced. How can we manage worry? We replace worry with prayer. Why worry when we can pray? Philippians 4, 6, and 7, now go back to what Paul said in its entirety. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God. Verse 7, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Secondly, we must live one day at a time. Matthew 6, 33, 34, my favorite I guess it is my favorite Bible verse. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles. I recently Googled what percent of things we worry about, and I have learned from research and performed that 85 to 90 percent of the things that we worry about never happen. I had to go back and, like I said, I searched three or four different ones. The first time I read that, it said 90%. I'm thinking, wow, that's a stout number. We worry about things, but only 10% of them ever come to fruition, basically. Winston Churchill was once quoted, When I look back on all the worries, I remember the story of an old man who sat on his deathbed. He had a lot of trouble in his life, most of which never happened. Sometimes we spend too much time playing the what-ifs and the if-only games, which cause us to worry. What if I get cancer? What will I do? What if I lose a family member? What will I do? What if I lose my job? What will I do? And then there is the if-only things like, if only I had taken that other job, or if only I were rich, or if only I had finished college, If we constantly worry about the past or the future, then we are wasting precious time. Don't get me wrong, I believe we can plan for the future and learn from the past. It's okay to be concerned about one's retirement or planning for our family in case of death, and it's okay to set future goals. However, it is not wise to constantly worry about these things. Lastly, to worry less and enjoy life more, we must not worry about things that are out out of our control. What people say and think about us is out of our control. When we live the Christian life that the Lord commands us to live, we will be the example he wants us to be, and those thoughts and sayings about us should be nothing but positive. If not, they that say those things or have those thoughts about us need to be the ones concerned. People worry about disasters such as hurricanes, earthquakes, tornadoes, etc. We worry about the wars overseas that are currently taking place which are out of our control. I've read a lot of things on Facebook where people are concerned about Israel and being God's given people and country and that's just not the way it is today and how this is the end of the world is coming because of the wars taking place there. Many people believe that when these things happen the end of the world is at hand. Matthew 24, 35, 36, Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Death is out of our control, and of course I'm speaking of physical death. The fear of death is the, member, is the, member, is the number one phobia in the world. I don't think that this does statistic is particularly surprising to anyone. Death is a part of life. We are all going to die physically. For faithful Christians, death is a victory. Well, as I close, I want to leave us with these four things that will help us enjoy this life more. Number one, replace worry with prayer. Number two, live one day at a time. Number three, stop worrying about things out of our control. And number four, take advantage of the one thing we do have control over, and that's our relationship with God. 
If we want true happiness, I think David wrote it best in Psalms 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. If you're here tonight and yet to establish a relationship with God, we plead with you to do so before it's everlasting too late. If you're here and worry or anxiety or other causes are destroying your soul and you need to make it right with God, why don't you come and let the church pray for you as together we stand and sing. Breaks eternal bright and fair when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there on that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun let us talk of all his wondrous love and care then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the day. We thank you for the many blessings you bestow upon us. Dear Lord, we're so thankful that you've given us this time this evening to come together and to sing songs of praise to you and to study a lesson from your word. Dear Lord, at this time we ask that you please be with those that are of our number that are sick and uh, are ailing. And dear Lord, we just ask that you please be with them and be with the hands that are administering to them and bring them back to their much wanted needed help. Dear Lord, we ask that you please be with Lance and his family as they're going through their struggles with Lance's father. And dear Lord, just watch over and care for them. Dear Lord, we ask that you we please take this lesson that Granny has presented tonight and to apply it to our lives. Dear Lord, we, we all worry about things we shouldn't. And dear Lord, help us to take those worries and take them to you in prayer. And dear Lord, just help us to dwell on you. Dear Lord, we ask that you please... Forgive us when we fall short. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. 